Namaste student this is Sanjay Nath today's session is on minerals and energy resources of india chapter 7 part 1 icc standard 10 in this chapter you're going to learn about different types of minerals available in india and their economic importance we'll also learn about the geographical location from where it is being mined and how it is being used in a wise manner so let's begin mineral economic definition a substance obtained from the earth crust which is of commercial and economic value i believe all of you have understood this point that a mineral is in huge quantity or in abundance is of no use unless until extract and that can be used for the commercial and economic purpose for example gold now what are the types of minerals available in india there are metallic category non metallic and power metallic minerals available in abundance in india iron ore manganese copper and bauxite followed by that non metallic minerals are limestone gypsum granite and marble mineral used in generation of power is coal petroleum and uranium now we'll see from a macro level perspective how important is the mineral is for a country where the minerals are in abundance it provide the basis for industrial development thereby raising national income providing employment opportunities earning in terms of foreign exchange by exporting the minerals minerals plays a very important role in industrialization and it also improve the quality and the standard of living of the people those who are associated with the mining activities now you understand how minerals are important in economic development of any country with the help of in one question how does industrialization create wealth answer is value addition assuming that the steel costs rupees 60 per kg and steel watch weight just 25 grams 10000 rupees is the cost of watch of 25 grams and 60 rupees per kg is the steel that cost now with that calculation the cost should be 4 lakh per kg industries those were into manufacturing they convert that steel into a valuable product now we'll understand how minerals and mineral based industries plays a very important role in the economic development of india agriculture alone cannot support the rising population people must take up other occupations and industrialization is a need for the r minerals are the basis of industrialization at the present time along with this it is very important that we should use the minerals in a very judicious manner without compromising the need of the future generation efficiency in mining technology followed by that government should control over the mineral resources and there should be reuse recycle of mineral and avoid wastage of mineral now we'll see the metallic minerals available in india in detail first is iron ore iron ore is available in indian abundance these are the ores of iron hematite magnetite limonite and siderite now we'll understand how iron ore has been found or occurrences primarily they are found in the sedimentary rock like sandstone and shale this one is a symbolic image to make you understand how iron ore has been found in sedimentary rock these are the particles of sand and within that the intermolecular space are filled with iron oxide it has been extracted with certain technique iron has been alloyed with manganese to make high quality steel and steel has been used for making machineries farming equipments construction tools and vehicles availability of iron ore in india these are the some of the very important geographical locations where the mines are there where iron ore has been extracted in, in large volume orissa it mayurbhanj sundargarh and kyonjhor they are the largest producer of iron ore in india followed by jharkhand singhum and palamu they are the largest reserve and chatisgarh in durgan bastar district first three states are considered to be the important sources of iron ore in india followed by karnataka maharashtra tamil nadu goa and andhra pradesh now we'll see the india's position in the production of iron ore fourth largest producer of iron ore in the world 90 million tons per annum and india produces 10% of world production of iron ore we also have the largest reserves 6.6% of world total reserves are known that is in india india is considered to be the second largest exporter of iron ore and japan is the biggest buyer this map of india is showing the locations of iron ore mines now we look upon the second important metallic mineral available in india in abundance in detail manganese ores of manganese are pyrazolate and silimonite now we'll see what are the uses of manganese in the manufacturing industries it is alloyed with iron to make steel it is also mixed with the paint to increase the luster it also used in making of glass bleaching powder and batteries india's position in the manganese production india is the seventh largest producer of manganese in the world produces 2.5 million tons per annum india is self sufficient in the production of manganese it also exports some manganese to japan usa and european countries now we'll see the geographical locations occurrences of manganese in india the largest producer of manganese is orissa state the places are sundargarh and kyonjhor followed by in the state of karnataka balare second largest producer madhya pradesh chhindwada and balaghat district these are the geographical locations and the occurrences of manganese availability in india 
this would be a very useful map of India showing minerals, mainly metallic mineral availability. Now we look upon the third important metallic mineral available in India in abundance in detail. Copper. There are certain important qualities and characteristics of copper that make it different from other metallic minerals as follows. is highly ductile, good conductor of electricity and good conductor of heat. There are some industrial uses of copper. It has been used for making arms and ammunition and utensils, electrical machineries, railway equipments, also used in making stainless steel and different parts of telephones. It has also been alloyed to make brass and bronze. Now we'll see the geographical locations and occurrences of copper in India. Places Taregaon and Balaghat in the state of Madhya Pradesh, Jhunjhunu district and Ajmer in the state of Rajasthan, followed by Hazari Bagh and Palamu in the state of Jharkhand. Now we are going to learn about what are the primary sources of energy used for generation of power. There are two categories, convectional sources and non-convectional sources. At present in India, there are two primary raw material has been used for generation of energies, coal and petroleum. These two are convectional source. It has been used widespread. Followed by that, there are non-convectional source of energies are also getting popular in India. Solar power, wind power, nuclear energy and biogas. Now we are going to learn about the convectional and non-convectional energy resources in detail. First we will understand what are convectional sources of energy. These minerals once it has been used it cannot be replenished. These are non-renewable. These minerals have been used widespread and has been used commonly for ages. It cannot be recycled. Once exploited we cannot reuse. The best examples are coal and petroleum. Now we will see one of the very primary source of energy in India, coal in detail. Coal is also called black gold. It has been mined from open cast mine or closed mine for ages. Now we'll understand in detail how coal form in the freshwater conditions. For millions of years, the dead remains of plants that get buried beneath the earth and they get fossilified in the protected environment in the absence of O2. And slowly in the course of time, it get permineralized and form coal. Now we'll understand the formation of coal with the help of an animation. The ideal condition for the formation of coal Due to some geological activity on the earth crust, there is a fault line has formed and this fault line might have filled with water. Ancient river might have flowed through this fault line and some dead remains of plants are also deposited at the bottom of the river. In the course of time, due to the erosional effect, the river might have deposited huge volume of sediments. Due to the weight of these sediments, gradually these dead remains of plants have been converted into coal. This happens in the freshwater condition. In the absence of O2, the dead remains of plants get permineralized and fossilified and convert to coal. Now we'll understand how coal has been classified. Coal primarily classified on the basis of carbon content. This is called carbonation. This is primarily studied in geochemistry. For longer the time the dead remains of plants are buried beneath the earth, it forms good quality coal. In stage 1, peat coal, they have 50-60% of carbon content. Higher quality, lignite, 60-70% of carbon content. Little higher, bituminous, 70-80% of carbon content. And the best quality coal is called anthracite, it contains 80-90% of carbon. Now we'll see what are the types of coals available in India. This classification is based upon the geological occurrence. There are two categories, Godwana coal and tertiary coal. The first type is called Godwana coal. Godwana coal is also called the ancient coal formed during the Carboniferous period is about 300 to 360 million year old. It is a laminated bituminous coal. It's primarily used in the iron and steel industry as a coking coal for melting of iron ore. It is also been used in steam engines. Tertiary coal is called the recent coal. It is formed during last 50 to 60 million years ago. The best example of tertiary coal is lignite. Uses are in thermal power plants and it is also been used in steam engines. Now we will see the occurrences and distribution of coal in India. Jharia, Bokaro, Gredi and Hazaribagh. These are the largest reserve of coal mines in Jharkhand state. Followed by Raniganj, Purulia, Bankura and Bardhaman in the state of West Bengal. Tilchar, Sambalpur and Dhinkanal in Orissa. And Vardha Valley and Mahapari in Maharashtra. These are the states are rich in Godwana coal. Panandro and Umarsar in Gujarat state. Kantapalli and Singreni in Telangana, Naivali and Virannam in Tamil Nadu state and Palna in Rajasthan. These are the primary areas of tertiary coal. 2% of anthracite coal is found in Assam and Jammu Kashmir. Now we will see what are the advantages and disadvantages of use of coal. Leading source of electricity today, versatile can be burned directly, transformed into liquid and gas, inexpensive compared to other energy resources. Coal can easily transport it to any location. 
Now it has become more safer over time. Despite being a finite resource, it is available in plenty in India. Now we'll see what are the disadvantages. Burning of fossil fuel, mainly coal, it emits greenhouse gases and is a primary source of pollution and has also increased global warming. They are the non-renewable resources or the workers, those who are working in the coal mine will suffer from fatal diseases. For example, coal miners often suffer from black lung disease. Now we'll see the India's position in coal production, 400 million tons per annum. India is the third largest producer of coal in the world. India is having the fourth largest reserves and 7% of world reserves are in India. Yet we import coal. Thank you for watching the presentation.